Hey, it is day 10 on the Appalachian Trail, and we have, we've had quite a day. Um, day 10, so the stats, we're doing 14, we, everybody on the AT is doing 14, no, I don't know. Um, I'm doing 14, I've kind of latched on to a couple guys that I've been hiking with a little bit, um, but I'm doing 14 today, and um that will bring me into Waya Shelter. And the reason why I slowed down to say that is I was told that it's Waya, not Waya, by a local. And that gets me thinking that how important it is to, in the local culture or the local area, is to say the, the names of the, the towns or the you know, the, the shelters and the places to say them how the locals say them. Just like when somebody drives, you know, up to New Hampshire and they say, oh yeah, we just went by Worcester. And then we went by P.O. Body. <laughs> and, you know, and then all the Bostonians like myself, it's like, no, it's Worcester. It's Worcester, it's Peabody, Swampscott, Harvard. Etc. Etc. So it's just kind of, I guess this is payback when I when I say things wrong, um, but it. Uh, I'm gonna say something. Oh, happy day, which is a tribute to my mom, because that's what she used to say to us whenever she'd be upset at us. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is today is actually her birthday. So happy birthday, mom. And yeah, so that's uh, that's I had to say that first. Oh, happy day! Whenever we were fighting and bickering in the back of the car, getting our day old day old donuts from the donut shop, which uh, she loved us. She at least bought us donuts, right? But anyhow, my sister, who I told you is sharing this with her. Remi retirement uh, at the retirement home. Um, I think she'll get a kick out of it if nobody else understands. Uh, but yeah, so we are, like I said, 14 miles. Woke up and there was just a horrific thunderstorm coming through the area. And they said it was going to last till 8 o'clock. And at the time of filming this, it is roughly 2, 2.15. Um, sorry, I get the sniffles. But we got hit with a wicked rainstorm. And yeah, it was, I mean, there was it was thundering and lightning uh, around us the whole time. Um, not, I mean, not super close, but pretty close and got us drenched and if you look at my jacket it's it's a lighter green it's actually uh after the storm rolled through it became pretty windy and we made it up to siler bald and that's supposed to be the prettiest views of all the north carolina at or at least that's what they say um the problem is it was like super gray. If you look, it's still gray behind me, but it's uh, it's much better weather than it than we had. Um, so we we made it through that storm. To the the weather, the temperature is going to be dropping. I believe a little bit overnight. Tomorrow is going to be a little colder. Um, we're reaching up to, I think, hitting mile 120 tonight uh, in 10 days. So averaging 10 miles or 12 miles per day after 10 days. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Tomorrow we will do we the, <laughs> all the people in the AT. No, <laughs> I'll do between 12 and 16. And that will bring us, that will bring me close, 
to the NOC where I have to pick up the permit to go into the Great Smoky National Park, which is, I believe, $20 to get that. And that allows us to hike through and it gives us 30 days to do so, uh, eight days actually in the park. Oh, and I got a pretty sketchy spot here. Uh, like over an old tree trunk. Yeah, you shouldn't be carrying a camera while you're walking. It's dangerous. <laughs> okay, back at it. Um, so one thing I did learn today from our hostel um, manager, innkeeper, host, and we talked about the term cameling up or camel up at the water stops. So my understanding of camel up is drink a whole bunch of water, then fill up all your bottles and carry everything, you know, all the water, water bottles totally filled and carry it to the next to the next stop. What he does and has worked effectively for him is he will literally camel up. He will drink, he'll fill up a whole bottle or whatever he needs at the time. And then he will, um, he'll drink all that as much as he needs, as much as he can, but then doesn't carry water in in his bottles he carries one water bottle and that's usually empty from the way he made it sound because the water supply is so abundant on the Appalachian Trail so when I ran into my problem is because I skipped water sites water sources and by doing that I Oh, phew, I've been going down for a little bit. Um, I missed the opportunity to, quote, camel up, and I would have been so much better off if I had I done that. I don't feel totally comfortable with not having any water until I get faster and, you know, to, to be able to get to... to water sources quicker. I mean, if I'm just putzing along, I'm not going to be able to get to that water source all that quickly. So I'm not, so I'm not totally into it. And, uh, so he, uh, but the other thing that he was talking about is when there is a spring and uh, like a pipe coming out of out of the side of the mountain, that water is is fresh and will not have. Um, and this could be controversial, people. Uh, it will not have the uh, the bacteria or the cryptosporidian or giardia that standing water may carry. Um, so when we first got picked up by his partner. She just put her water bottle under the the spring and it's what she drank. Best water in the world, she said. Um, and they haven't had a problem with that. So his three rules, if I don't butcher them, is one, if the water is coming directly out of the mountain and it's not too far from the top. You can kind of see the terrain and the top where there's gonna be no standing pools of water above or in front of where you're gathering the water. Like right here, for example, we have a trickle of water, but then there's that standing pool right, <laughs> I don't know, right there. There's a standing pool of water he would, he would probably filter that. Um, so standing pool of water directly out of the mountain, being able to see the top 
and then um, what was the third part? You have to really kind of see if it's flowing, if it's if the water is flowing well. So those that's a tip from you know the host, and everybody's got to make their own choice. I carry the filter, and I'm going to continue to use the filter, but I'm going to also pay attention to the whole cameling up and noting that if the um yeah here's a nice one i'm sorry if this is just an example there's rock 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 and then there is where is it can you see it it's dripping down so it does have an area a few areas of pooling so i wouldn't trust that as far as um as far as getting the water, you know, directly without the thing. So keep that in mind while you do your hikes. Uh, I've had a few subscribers ask me about how my carnivore diet is going. The carnivore diet is going very well. I, like a lot of people right now, we're not eating a lot of cal calories, no matter what diet you're on or what way of eating or however you want to call it. We're not eating a lot of calories. Uh, we're trying to, people are trying to eat more and more. One of the big things, the struggle is people are carrying too much food and they might have, you know, eight to 10 days worth of food and there's somewhere to get food every, I don't know, two to three days. Uh, so I took that to heart. I culled my stuff down. I have five days of meals and probably two to three days of snacks. And when I say meal, I have a couple spams for breakfast. If I, well, I actually carry that. I don't eat breakfast right away. I just don't feel like it. And then I will have a big dinner, which is my real meal but then I carry some snacks because I know wherever I go, there will be a carnivore option for my snacks. And, but that's been going really well. I feel, I feel great hiking. I don't feel weak. I'm able to push up mountains very slowly. And as always, it has nothing to do with carnivore. Um, and so, that is a big deal for me. Every once in a while, I feel like somebody's coming down the mountain and I just don't want to film them without them knowing. Uh, yeah, so the so carnivore is going good. Um, somebody had asked me about my gear, so I'll just give you kind of a rough overview of what I feel for the gear. My backpack let's just talk about that today it's a cac with 55 55 liter backpack it is an ultralight pack it's about i think 30 ounces you guys can look that one up and then somebody can comment um, or everybody look it up and uh it has it has served me very well I'm still getting used to kind of the adjustments and the adjustment capability I had Trouble with the lift loaders, meaning I didn't pull them tight enough and I felt like there was too much like strain on my on my mid back. And once I did that, it, it helped. Uh, I still have a little bit of ache in the mid back, but that comes on at roughly 10 miles. The CAC of 55 has done well. I When I get into camp, I'll see how water resistant it was in regards to this wicked storm i mean it just blew in and oh man and the thing is the funny thing is you can't outrun it you just have to keep going your own pace otherwise you get out of breath and i mean you're still getting wet and you're getting soaking wet but yeah everything every everything got soaked but it was warm enough where I didn't need gloves and over mitts and all that. So that's a, that's a good thing. So that's my Kakwa 55 liter, very good pack. Um, after resupply, five days of resupply, 
I shifted out some socks. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. I weighed that pack before I left uh, the hostel this morning and I was at 21 pounds. That's everything. That's fully loaded with snacks. My, wa uh, not watch, my camera, my glasses, you know how heavy those are. Uh, so it was, yeah, 21 pounds. And uh, can't beat that. And that will even go lower as I get more, I guess, further north. Um, but a tip with this is I've been decluttering my, my pack with uh, like socks, for example, right? But I'm having them shipped further up, part of resupply, but I won't, I don't feel like that's, I, I don't think, I don't think I'm going back to them. I, I have some new socks that I bought yesterday, more spring-like, so my feet don't, uh, don't burn up. So, with all that said, we are in North Carolina. If you like this, give me the like, subscribe, share with people who you, who may benefit from it, and check off your bucket list at least break out your bucket list kind of look for something fun to do and just just start getting at it i will be talking to you tomorrow have a great afternoon morning evening whatever it is